All right. Just go back and play some audio for you. We know that this angle right here, alpha, cuts out the distance from our observation point to the horizon. Okay. Right, pause there. Because Bob has just marked two points in his diagram at sea level. One below the observation point, as in underground, or inside the base of the building, and one at sea level at the horizon, not at the actual observation point up the mountain and at the horizon. So, we can take this angle alpha, which is the same thing. Agree with him there. And we can take alpha, divide it by 360. A fraction of a circle. Times the circumference of the Earth, which is 24,901 miles. And miles. And we can come up with a distance from here to the horizon. And there he's marked the top of the mountain and the horizon. Which is not the same thing. Okay, that's number one. Number two, what is the horizontal drop here? Well, the easiest the way... A horizontal drop? I think what he means is how far is the horizon there below sea level where you are. But that was a weird way to put it. To do that is draw a line at a 90 degree angle. Yeah. Straight from our horizontal line, here is angle alpha. That is a line that is vertical where you are, but intersects the Earth's surface at the horizon. And the drop here is going to be the same as the height of our observation because it goes. And the way he did this on screen, it looks like he's saying the drop from your eye level, not from sea level where you are to the horizon equals your elevation. And that's just uh, wrong. It goes from our observation height to zero. Yeah, but your observation height is above sea level where you are, and that's zero at a different latitude or longitude or both. And I was in the middle of typing out a, a thing saying, objection, they're not the same thing. But I thought, let's actually illustrate that. This is a program I've just cobbled together. It may not be entirely efficient. It defines the radius of the Earth as 6,271 kilometers. That's entirely inefficient because, um, yeah. That helps, yeah. Actually type in R equals. I look so professional when I do things like that. Let's have 6,371,000 meters and work in meters, not work in kilometers. Otherwise, those elevations are going to look bloody silly. It's no wonder I got such huge ratios. Right, you have a... Define the radius of the Earth to be that big. If it's um, volumetric mean radius according to NASA, put in whatever you like, put in 8,000 if you feel like it. R squared, risk one, is just R squared. It saves typing out a lot later. From zero to 100,000 in steps of 600 meters, for each of those steps, from 100 to 600 in steps of 100 meters, yeah, the elevation is x plus y. So you're going to go from 100 to 600, and then from 700 to 1,200, and then from 1,300 to 1,800, and so on. The reason that's doubled is so that I can get a dollar equals get dollar down here, which is BBC Basic for wait until someone presses a button. Hit any user to continue. A, the angle, is the angle whose cosine is the radius divided by the sum of the radius plus elevation. I could put in another variable, line 55, you know, RB, and just put this as R over RB, or whatever. Radius to per sea level, radius to observer. Surface distance is what he worked out. Only I'm working in radians, BBC Basic works in radians. So it's just the angle times the radius. Radians are really handy that way. Linear distance, 
by Pythagoras. It is the square root of the difference between radius to observer squared and radius squared. You know, it's starting to piss me off that I didn't put in radius to observer as a variable because it would look so much prettier that way. True drop, the actual drop from sea level where you are to your horizon in a direction parallel to straight down where you are is the radius minus radius cos A or it's the radius times 1 minus cos A with brackets around it, either way works and we have output at this elevation you get this angle why is there no space there? that looks scruffy as well the surface distance to the horizon is this, the linear distance to the horizon is this, the ratio of the two is that. The drop from sea level where you are to sea level at the horizon is this many meters, and the ratio of that to elevation is that divided by elevation. And it'll do all six, then it'll wait for you to press a button, and it'll do the next. Scruffy quickly cobbled together code. I'm, I'm tempted to waste video time by putting in that, but never mind. Ru RN, run, registered nurse, Royal Navy, no, run. It's going to say, 100 meters above the surface, you have this tiny angle, 5.6 milliradians. And your surface distance and your linear distance are both 35,695 point something big uh, meters, both round to 35696, or 35.7 kilometers if you want to be tidy about it. 0.99999. You can call this one. They're pretty much the same thing. Drop from sea level to sea level. Where you are to sea level at the horizon, 99.9998 meters, and your elevation is 100 meters. Ratio, 0.99998. Again, you can call this one. So with this low elevation, he, to be fair to Bob, in the, the uh, example he gave, he was talking about 400 feet, which is somewhere between 100 meters and 150 meters. So yeah, pretty close to one. But if you're going to get mathematical, you should have a general solution that works for any ele elevation, including the International Space Station. Kind of 600 meters. We're still looking at ratios of 0.9999 something. You can still call it one. So let's get up to as high as you can get in England and Wales, 1,100 meters. Not quite. And it's 18.6 milliradians horizon dip angle your linear distances are now oh, yeah this is not with refraction with refraction it's about 127 kilometers without 118.4 kilometers in both cases you see the ratio is 0.99988 now which rounds to 0.9999 as it did up there and it's you could still call it one to be fair Drop from a sea level 1,099.8 metres, which you could round to 1,100.9998. So, all right, for that, still good. Scotland makes it onto the next page, even if only just. Let's jump down a few. There we go. 4,100 metres. I have been higher than that. On my own two feet. Tube cow. You are down to 35.9, sorry, up to 35.9 milliradians. 35.9. Oops. 0.0359 radians. In radians, sine in degrees, inverse sine. 2.057 degrees. And your surface difference distance is now 0.9996. So still rounds to one. And drop and the ratio of the actual drop to the the elevation, which is what he said you use as drop, 0.9994. So that still rounds to one. So okay, anywhere you're likely to go on Earth without bottled oxygen, we could jump to the next page. 
somewhere on this next page is Kilimanjaro, or maybe it's on the next one. Always piss me off when people wanted to climb Kilimanjaro. They go around with sponsorship forms, saying they're trying to raise sponsorship for some wonderful, worthy charity by climbing Kilimanjaro. And they hand you what's basically the the uh, holiday company's brochure page for a, a trip up Kilimanjaro that costs two thousand eight hundred pounds, and they say that I need to raise three thousand pounds in sponsorship. You, think, well, <laughs> you mean you want me to pay for you to go and climb Kilimanjaro? Tell you what, here's, here's a check for 250 quid to that charity. Now you don't have to bother. And if you still want to climb Kilimanjaro, you can pay for it yourself. 6,000 metres. You're not actually running out of mountains yet. You're just getting down a fewer and fewer of them. 8,000 metres is on the screen. We're talking very serious business in the Himalaya and a few other places now. Five hundred and one milli radians. Two point eight seven degrees. Still point nine nine nine, still point nine nine nine, still rounds to one. Ten thousand well, past ten thousand meters. And they still round to one. Let's just see how high you have to go before it Well, how soon it matters depends how accurate you want to be. See so we're up to nine nine seven seven six and nine nine seven seven four. They still can of round to one, don't they? How much accuracy do you want? Because we're out by a quarter of a percent here. Out by more than a quarter of a percent, and we're still within the capabilities of fixed wing conventional aircraft. Not all conventional aircraft, just some. Right, and if I just hold down a button here. It's going to run rather slowly up to just above the Kármán line. So I know 100,000 isn't divisible by 600, but it'll get there and figure out that it got far enough and it'll stop. Look how we're about a quarter of the way up, right? Yeah, text buffer, input buffer. It's going to keep going for a while. the way. Now if I made the ratios stick out further, you could read them on the way past. Does it look like it's still 0.99 something? It'd be great to have this in 1920 by 1080 resolution with the full power of the computer rather than simulating BBC Micro, but whatever. Did I really hold the key down that long? Oh, there we go. It's not quite halfway. Well, not quite halfway from surface to Kármán line. Relative to the radius of the planet. Practically there already. Even at the surface. Okay, that's, that's the halfway. 50,000 metres. 0.1248... Well, 1249... Call it point one two five radians. Seven point one five five degrees. That'd show. Ratio of distances point nine nine five. Ratio of drop to elevation point nine nine two. That rounds to being one percent out. Yeah, <laughs> if you uh, take the inverse sign of the inverse sign of the inverse sign of that, you end up with 7 times 10 to the minus 48. Helps have the cursor in the right place before you press enter. Right, click the right window.
No, it might be faster to rejig this to run in bigger jumps and start again at the beginning. And there's 75 kilometers, three quarters of the way to the Carmen line. 0.153 radians. Ratios 0.992 and 0.988. Pretty close to one. Wrong by more than 1% there. Gotta let it finish. Actually, if I hold it down too long, it might scroll it off the screen when it finishes. Pressing shift doesn't work, it has to be the character that will register. So, what I should do is use something other than enter. Use M, we've got a line of M's when it finishes. There we go. See, so it realized it got past the Carmen line and it stopped. It didn't actually run one more time beyond it. Realized its next one would be on it, didn't bother doing the next 600. But there we have actually at the Carmen line. Okay, for that figure. Ten point zero eight six degrees. And one thousand one hundred and twenty one kilometers. 1,133 kilometers linear because you're that far above the surface. And we're still pretty much 99%, 98.5%. So, all right. Hold on, list. I'm going to put that in. Call it row. Radius to observer equals LF plus R. R plus LF addition is commutative. And then I can just call that row. Well, actually, it doesn't need the brackets around it if it's that. There's a space there. Being fussy for no good reason. Where's that missing space on that one? Here we go. Is there a space in there? Tidied that up. The other thing I want to do is change these numbers. Let's go up to a million in steps of ten thousand. And for 
here will go 2,000 to 10,000. 10 steps of 2,000 to 1,000. That should be faster. Everything else can stay the same. And we've actually already seen this part, so it's going to very quickly get us back to the Carmen line. We can go beyond it. Maths in space! To borrow from the Muppet Show all those years ago. I think I pressed that button too many times. I held it for too long. It's twice the Carmen line and it's still going. God damn, this goes fast. There we go. Come on a few more, more times. Now, last time I checked, the International Space Station was at 427 kilometers. Let's just go to 400. If I was just going to go 400, why didn't I start at 400? Silly me. There we go. Also, I should have put in a line, an extra line to just output that as degrees rather than radians, shouldn't I? And there should be spaces before years. Never mind. 19.8 degrees down to the horizon, which is 2,201 kilometers away from the point beneath the ISS and 2,293 kilometers away directly. Down to 96% and 94% on the ratios there because the the center of the flat circle of which the horizon is the edge is 376 kilometers below sea level below the ISS 376 not 400 so there we go that is how much difference it makes I was wondering <laughs>